Hi guys, welcome back to Money and Chi. And today we are on our week 11 of Trade with Chi. Yay! <laughs> okay guys, so before we start, I would just like to say Happy Father's Day to your dads and to all of you who are already a dad. Yeah, and so yon, Happy Father's Day. And of course, I would also like to say thank you for all of you who are already subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification button para lagi tayong updated. So this week, we will be discussing Megawide. Yay! <laughs> Yan, maraming nagre-request ulit na gumawa tayo ulit ng stock and focus. And um, based on sa mga requests, the number one as of the moment is Megawide. So we will discuss right now. And if you're ready, stay tuned. Okay, so let's start with the analysis. And under the analysis, what are we gonna do? Qualitative analysis. Tama, di ba? Para ako si Dora ngayon. Anyway, so dapat by this time alam yun na yung process natin. First of all, um, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, pero I used to work in Megawide um, in 2015 to 2017. Um, I was actually hired as assistant manager for corporate financing. At, but then it was moved to business development manager for the renewable energy sector. So um, I was trying not to really <laughs> do the megawatt, but since there's a lot of requests, because I don't want to be biased. Naman. Syempre, I used to work there, syempre, mas marami akong alam internally, and I don't want to spill out a lot of those information for you guys, because that might affect your investment. But um I'll try to, um, of course, give the good and the bad stuff for Megawide. Like we always do in every stocks, we have to be very um, objective. So, yun, let's let's start na, di ba? <laughs> um, let's start with how Megawide started. So, next start si Megawide noong 1997. So, if I haven't told you this before, uh, we always have this financial crisis every 10 years. Nagkataon lang. Hindi ko sure kung nagkataon na siya. Pero it's a cycle, di ba? Parang sinabi nga lang, if there's always up and there's always down, di ba? Up, down, up, down. There's no such thing as straight line. So, um, every 10 years, nagkataon na nagkakaroon tayo ng financial crisis. So, if you remember nung 2007, yung financial crisis. So, nung, 2000, uh, nung 1997, when they graduated from college, straight from college, um, Na medyo nakaka-relate ako doon kasi when I graduated, crisis then and it's so hard to find a job. Um, and especially now, yung mga fresh graduates, I'm sure most of you are also struggling to find a job and that's a very difficult um, experience. Lalo na, for me, kasi I, I lalo na ako, kasi finance graduate ako, tapos, um, financial crisis, di ba? Saan ka pa? Halos lahat ng banks naglilay off. Nobody's hiring that time. And if ever they do, they're looking for those who are graduate of Ateneo La Salle and UST po ako. So, I'm the first graduate, uh, I'm the first batch to graduate uh, finance and UST. So, there's no such thing as, wala ka pang, ano eh, um, alumni and everything. So, those are the issues that you will encounter this year. So, lalo na kung ikaw, you're, you're started trading and you're a fresh grad that start ka sa business mo. And Mega White story is a very perfect story for you. And not just for fresh grads, for those who are also um, laid off, wala wala ng trabaho, nag-iisip kung paano. Kaya rin na I, I, I chose this this stock na rin to, to tell you para rin ma-inspire kayo guys to start your own businesses to pursue your dreams diba? So, these two engineers, fresh graduate from La Salle, started their own construction company. Kasi tara, magtayo tayo ng ano natin ng, <laughs> ng construction company natin. Bakit hindi? Tanungin natin yung mga uncles natin, yung mga ano diba? Siyempre mag-start ka sa family, tapos sa friends kanyan. So, at the end of the day, meron naman at meron at meron makitiwala. So yun, they, they started until such time na, alam nyo yun, bata ka eh, risk taker ka, mar marami kang lakas ng loob. I, I remember this nung bata ako, marami akong lakas ng loob. Ngayon, medyo pag tumatanda ka, nakawala yung lakas ng loob mo eh. Pero as a, uh, as a beginner, sobrang lakas ng loob nila until such time na they were able to land a big uh, contract which is SM. So this is a good thing naman about SM kasi they really give 
um, chances to newbies, to new to newcomers, de ba? They are looking for newcomers. They invest on them. They give them contracts para they can grow with them, and they 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 are really part of the growth of those companies, which is nice. Because that's what I really like about SM. Because yun nga they support small businesses until they grow. And then they invest on them as well. So they are part of the growth. Uh, most of the SMDC construction uh, buildings are done by me by Megawide. So Megawide, uh, you have to remember in construction, there's two things. So merong vertical and horizontal. So uh, vertical, yun yung mga buildings, ganyan, mga sa metro, ganyan. And lateral are more of like highways, railways, mga... Um, Hydro, mga ganyan, canals, water. And um, right now, si, ang strength ni Mega White talaga is more on the vertical. Because they are really young, they're very innovative as well. So, as compared to other construction companies um, like EEI, BMCI, so I used to work in a subsidiary of Yuchenko group of companies as well. And I know how conservative EEI and like the Yuchenko group of companies are. It's very conservative. Um, and BMCI, as I look at it, is also very conservative um, and very family oriented company so so mega wide um pushed for innovation and because of that maraming na force na to move to the innovation as well Biro nyo, they can finish um the constructions on time yeah in 2011 they wanted to create a precast yung malaking like state of the art precast ano nila um plant nila and they did uh, ipo for that and it was a very successful IPO. So they have precast, they have form work system, concrete batching plant, and equipment and transportation. So this, kung alam niyo yun, ginagawa na nila yung mga, di ba sa construction ng mga um, condo units, precast na siya. So para na siyang yung bahay, tapos ididikit-dikit mo na lang siya, para siyang puzzle na lang. So they started that, I think, and then it was very successful. And that makes the construction faster. Because if, if you started uh, doing real estate before, you will realize that it will take 5 to 10 years before you finish the building or construction. But um, with Megawide, they were able to finish faster, which is really good. And that's their strength then. They continue to um, improve their system, their um, construction. So yun yung stro strength nila. Yeah, tapos when they raised the capital um, after finishing the the precast plant, they realized they still have a lot of cash and they don't know where to use that honestly. And you know, in, in construction kasi it's a very cyclical um, business. When you say cyclical, um, hindi siya flat. Parang di ba sa usapan natin yung flattening the curve. Ganun din ang ang ano ng construction kasi hindi flat yung curve niya ibig sabihin pag mataas malaki yung pag marami silang contract malaki yung kita nila pag wala silang contract wala silang kita so ang um, usually ang uh, the problem of uh, companies like Mega White is to look for flattening their curve ibig sabihin magkaroon sila ng um, regular income generating na businesses and that's their work uh, they're working towards that when i started when i joined them um, that's the time when they are trying to diversify their portfolio, um, not just in construction, but um, also in different um, businesses like yung airport, yung renewable energy, and yung transit, yung bus station, yeah. So, and then they were also able to land a lot of government contracts. So, before the, the current administration, there's not much... Um, PPP construction. So, nung kay Gloria, marami. Tapos yung sumunod yung kay Aquino, not much. And then, si Duterte would, uh, wanted to increase as well the PPPs. So, nagkaroon ng, yun nga, build, build, build. So, that's a very good um, chance for Mega White to actually end PPP side. And they were very successful. They have a very good uh, bidding 
uh, committee, <laughs> bidding people, yung group ni Sir Luby. Yan. So, they're very good in terms of um, bidding. Marami silang napapanalunan when it comes to their other um, clients. So, the, they have Rockwell, I think, before. They have um, Mega World, 8990, and Double Dragon as their clients. And this, uh, uh, this client base is really strong. I'm not sure about what happened to SM recently, pero baka wala silang masyadong projects. I will later on go through the projects. Ako, uh, personally, I, I like the management of Mega White in a sense because I used to work with them. And if you've ever been in a room with Saavedra, with Ed Saavedra, we call him Boss Ed. Napaka energetic niya. He's very energetic. So anyways, yun nga, um, they started the uh, um, yung sa airport, but then afterwards, nagkaroon na ng split si sa Avedra and ko si Kien. So sayang no kasi nung um, during that time there are, there are four we call them four bosses. Si um sa Avedra, si si Boss Ed, si Boss Mike, Sir Oli, si kasi Sir Louie. So yun yung four top four executives na you know it's very nice to stay uh, to be in a room with all these four people because they are young they are very energetic they are they trust you eh. so I that's what's good about them naman is that they trust people I am very young that time but they trust me to to do everything um that I can the best I, I think siguro ang medyo off lang for me is they're too aggressive and sometimes when they're too aggressive and too trusting, sometimes syempre hindi naman lahat ng tao mapagkakatula. So, there are some times na medyo hindi naging okay. Um, sayang yung, yung power sector sana if they were able to listen to us. There are missed opportunities, I must say. Um, Nandun na sana sila, pero it didn't work out kasi there are some issues. Pero at the end of the day, um, they have a very good outlook in a sense in terms of growth kasi they have um, and I think they learn from their mistake. Now they are really um, enriching their core. So they are focusing on their core strength and then slowly moving out diversifying kasi yun nga yun yung naging problem nila before naging too aggressive sila like push 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 and then suddenly you know um because learning takes time make learning curve tayo diba so that's one of the issues that uh, i encountered before with them but at the end of the day in terms of growth potential there's a lot and gonna sabi ko na ba and then yun nga si Ed Avedra and si Kosekien had a split it's very important hai, if you ever you start a business um, I always tell this to my clients and my friends. Na always have an exit clause. No matter how good the relationship are, like if you're best friends or you are family, there's always have to be an exit clause in any of your agreement. Um, just to protect your your relationship in the future. So I think they're still friends. They're, they're okay naman. Um, there's just, of course, when you grow, when you mature, di ba, nagkakaroon tayo ng different interests. So, I think those are the things that they wanted to pursue. Mahirap kasi pag kami gusto ka, tapos may gusto yung iba, tapos you, you don't want to really clash in that sense. So, might as well um, separate ways na lang and move forward. So, Mike has a new company na it's called ISOC. And I think it's good naman din. They, they did like yung freezer, a malaking freezer. Ano yung tawag? Kuli. <laughs> yeah, blue chain. I mean, it's more of the like the Kasi we we laugh that eh. and then they have, you know, they are also doing real estate. Yun si Ed Avedra would be very good in terms of you know, new technology. They keep on they keep on doing that. In terms of financing, um I think they have a strong financial backup as well. Um, I'm not sure what's the relationship with SM, but I think SM would always be there for them in terms, in times of need that they, they really need ng, um, additional equity. In terms of um, yun nga, other projects, they are trying to flatten the curve and they've kind of uh, some miss and hit there. So, na hit nila yung in terms of airport. Uh, we'll show that later in the quantitative. You will see that. 
But in terms of um, of the renewable energy, it's kind of not hitting. But I I know for a fact that they're trying to diversify into other um, areas as well. Some of those they already won the bid, um, uh, but. I don't know if I can disclose those information. Anyway, so at, at the end of the day, um, they're still there in terms of growth potential. Um, I know that they are also working towards a better um, revenue stream. There's growth. That's all I can say. There's growth. So if you are looking at Megawatt as of the moment, for a long period, of, for a long-term investment, it's a good investment for me. Because yeah, I working there I, I know the management I know how they work I know how they are you know forward looking and innovative and that's a very good recipe for um, for a growth company and especially for a long-term investment so as in the qualitative aspect it's good okay guys so now we move on to quantitative analysis now looking at the quantitative analysis for mango white and um, if you want this report, you can find it in the website. But I'll put the link below, in Just so, just if you want to read the whole thing. But we will just, you know, focus on the key items. So for this one, syempre, we look at the income, and then the the earnings for uh, 2019 went down by 46 percent. From last year so I watched the video where they explained naman this um, and they're looking at you know uh, recovering that loss nga this year 2020 pero you know naman what happened <laughs> in the coronavirus so probably for 2020 it's on it's gonna be a loss at the loss side again so the other their earnings kasi is up, 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 down, down. So, this includes uh, this year. And, yeah, so, f the, the, they have three years strong going up and then two years going down. So, yeah, and you can see the earnings. So, it's up, 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 down, and then down again for 2019. Wala na nakalabas dyan. And for 2000 20 down again. So, it's gonna be like really 2018, 2019, and 2020 downtrend. So, three years in a row. Okay, guys. So, ito tayo sa financial highlights of 2019. As mentioned earlier, diba, sabi ko, um, tinatry nila if flatten yung curve. Um, which is para magkaroon sila ng better um, revenue stream. So, as you can see here, Makita nyo siya sa breakdown. Um, yung construction, in terms of revenue, mas malaki pa rin siya. Pero di ba yung sa margin niya, 4% lang siya. And then yung airport is 19%, 1% ng merchandising, and 3% ng land port. So, but if you go to the EBITDA, reduce mo all of the cost, then you can see that medyo half, half yung airport and construction. So, as you can see, medyo nag-improve nag na yung ano nila, revenue performance nila. Um, well, not really, rev EBITDA performance nila, which is more important kasi it's the operational um, earnings nila. Um, so, it, it, it became better. And then when it goes to uh, when it comes to net income, actually the airport gives fifty one percent of the whole net income, and forty two percent na lang yung sa construction. So their plan of diversifying their cash flow, their revenue stream is actually effective, given the fact that it it was actually this way. So but then but then again at the end of the day, the revenue stream again will still be. Um, the construction, that's their strength. They're playing on it, of course. Definitely, they have to um, stick with their core and then eventually increase this part, you know, yung sa airport. Sayang lang, if they were successful sana in the power industry, then they could add uh, the renewables here, but it was not that successful. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, they have other plans of diversifying other than the airport, but other um, revenue stream in the future. So we'll, we'll try to see this expand even further in the future. Yeah. Um, of course, the net income, um, 2000, 
2018 versus 2019 actually went down pero yun nga as explained earlier meron kasing mga contracts na hindi pa tapos so um, and most of this net income is actually because of the financing expenses yung they they are very open about that naman they are heavily geared um levered Anyway, so the, pero if you look at the EBIT da naman in 2018 versus 2019, so the operations naman is actually better. So net income naman kasi of course some of this naman and the loan itself or the interest payment is actually your way to reduce your tax payment. So it's a tax shield. But then again, of course, um in, if you look at the EBIT da which is the operations wise of mega wide you can see that there's actually an improvement which is good and we we are looking forward to increasing that in the future so every company look at the ebit does well because that's definitely the the um cash flow or the the earnings with regards to the operations they have so epc means engineering procurement and construction if for those who doesn't know so if you do uh, like a construction um, contract you submit a bid for epc sometimes gusto nila if they have a construction company baka gusto nila engineering and procurement lang if they have the procurement wedding ec lang engineering and construction or construction lang. So, um, yun lang. Just remember the EPC. So, it depends. If there is a contract, just ask what 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 does it include? Does it include all the EPC or just like one or two of the factors? Okay. Um, this one, just read it kasi medyo maraming information. We'll have a lot of, ano, masyado na magiging mahaba yung video if we talk about everything. Um... Yeah, so this is the order book that they have. So they have 52 billion order book for 30 projects. So 50% of that is residential, infrastructure and facilities, 3%. And then office, commercial and industrial, 47%. So if you look at it, it's still a very vertical um, type of uh, construction. So mga buildings pa rin, di ba? In their precast sale went up by 147%, which is good. So, they are selling their precast na rin to the other developers, which is good. So, you can see, oh, yung precast sales mix niya is 40% external and then the internal 60% siya. So, it's a very good indication in a sense that, you know, um, they are taking advantage of their plant. Kasi sayang naman, di ba? Yung um, operational efficiency niya is so good so as you can see they have 30 projects for 2019 and then for 2020 q1 28 na lang ibig sabihin the two contracts was already finished and therefore that all also went down in terms of the uh, project cost a uh, project amount so mga nasa 4b yun so just expect na yun nga for quarter one may 4b sila na revenue and then, yeah, and ito, they also have the project updates. But for this one, we're not really gonna um, go into details. We'll just show you the projects itself para you can see kung ano yung mga uh, pinagkakaabalahan nila. Of course, the first one is the Clark International Airport. Of course, the Malolos Clark Railway Project. So, back to our ritual. Mega wide, um, ha, the five-year earning performance is up, up, down, down. And of course, it's gonna be down again this year. Um, your and your EPS growth is negative, thirty three point fifty one percent. Really bad. Anyways, the year to date PE growth is, um, from year end two thousand nineteen, the price went down by sixty one point forty six percent. So it's kind of like sale, but of course, if you deduct the thirty percent, it's kind of like. 30%. We will compare the PE ratio of um, Megawide compared to its rivals. The PE of Megawide right now is 18.81. So, it's their competitor, probably EEI. The PE is 9.6. So, mas cheaper si EEI, di ba? So, ang mahal ni, ni Megawide. And we can also compare to DMC, which is at 6.7, which is 
which is even cheaper. Oh, ayan guys. So, ready na ba tayo for the broker's recommendation? Ta-da! Ayan guys. So, we move forward now to the um, broker's recommendation. And this, we're using again call financials. Because this, they have the most recent one. So, they said that... Ayan. So, guys, I encourage you to read this. And then... We'll just move forward to the end, ha? So, in terms of their valuation. So, Consensus currently has a buy rating on Megawide with a future value estimated at 9.8 per share. So, yeah, if you buy now, which is at 7.13, you're looking at 9.8, diba? Mga 2 pesos gain for, for each share. So, yeah. That's the only broker's recommendation we have right now. And of course, let's start with the charting. So, kailan tayo papasok? Kailan tayo lalabas? Alright? Looking at a uh, megawide construction chart right now, um, as you can see, uh, within in 2019, it, it actually reaches 23 pesos. Pero now, it's at 7.3. So, Ang laki nung din drop niya. It started dropping February, no? Pero, um, 16 na siya nung by the start of 2020. This is probably because of the, um, low earnings of 2019 report. So, medyo downtrend na siya talaga at some point. Pero, yun nga na amplify pa. Because of the coronavirus, of course, and the thing is, um, I think it can reach or it can go back to its um, price at a 20 level, but it will take time. Siguro mga in two years. Because definitely this year is not going to be good, diba? But next year, I think they will be able to recover most of their contracts and they will definitely have better earnings by 2021. Uh, but for now, let's. So. As you can see in the chart, medyo nag-oversold na siya at this point. Diba? Um, yan. Nag-oversold na siya. At the same time, medyo malapit na mag-crossover yung MACD niya. So, it will definitely... Parang it, it's a signal na medyo downtrend na siya. So, if ever it crossed, definitely mababa pa siya. So, bantayan nyo lang itong MACD if, if the blue line goes below the the red. Ibig sabihin, time na para mag-antay kasi bababa pa siya. And if you want to buy, definitely the price to see is at around 5.98 or baka kaya pa nga, no? Kailan itong bumaba siya? This is May na, eh, no? Okay, so it can actually go down again around 4.46. Ba, kung 4 siya, bibili ako niyan. <laughs> Yan. So at this point, if if it crosses, so at this point, you can see medyo large yung volume nung increase niya. And so far, medyo mababa pa yung volume nung decline niya. So ibig sabihin, medyo hahaba pa to. Pero it's safe to buy at around 6. 6? Or around lower than 6. So, if if that's me, I'll wait until it goes to 6 or even lower than 6 and then enter. And then I'll wait na lang. For shorter time frame investment, you can sell back siguro at around, yun nga, balik ka sa 8. Or if you can wait even longer, you can wait until it goes back to around 10 to 12. Ano to? Ayan. To 14. Ayan, no? So, kung mapapansin nyo, from start, naging megawide sila. As big as megawide. It's a 20-year long uh, journey and they were able to succeed. So, guys, if you wanted to start your own business as well, then go for it, diba? Walang coronavirus na makapagpapigil sa inyo. Actually, this is probably a good time for you to start. So, and guys, so sana marami kayo natutunan. If you want the video, please like and please share it. If you want to watch more of my videos in the future, please subscribe and hit the notification button para lagi kayong updated. I will start with Ask Chi because I have a lot of 
questions already. Parang kinaut ko 65 na siya and I haven't started with those yet. So I'll I'll try to record videos with with that. I'm just organizing the questions whether it's the you know yung levels niya para it doesn't waste your time as well. So anyways, guys, thank you. I don't want to waste more of your time. I know you're busy. You it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day and um Thank you, thank you so much for supporting Money and Chi. And yun lang. <laughs> it bye bye. Happy Father's Day.